For this example, we are trying to find the vertical, horizontal, and oblique asymptotes for this rational function, um, if they exist. So the first thing that I want to do is factor the numerator and denominator, because that's going to help me determine um, what my domain restrictions are, which are going to help me find my vertical asymptotes. And then the reduced form of this is actually going to be easier to work with, usually. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that. So the numerator, if we're factoring the numerator, I know that uh, 3 is a 0 of this. So that means that x minus 3 is a factor. x minus 3 is a factor. And if I take this factor out and I were to do synthetic division, I could find that the remaining quadratic function would be x squared plus 3x plus 9. So that's the factored version of this. Uh, and then this is not factorable. That would give us no real solutions. And then the denominator here factors to be x minus 3 times x plus 4. So we know that from our denominator, right, we get uh, domain restrictions. So we know that x minus 3 cannot equal 0. And we know that x plus 4 cannot equal 0. Um, so x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal negative 4. Um, but we do know that at negative or at 3 we don't get a vertical asymptote because if we look we can see that those factors actually cancel. So rather than giving us a vertical asymptote this is going to give us a hole in our graph and then we will have a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 4. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. So that's a vertical asymptote. Um, and then we have a hole at x equals 3. So let's look at the horizontal asymptotes. Um, but before we do that, we want to write this polynomial function in its simplest form. So we have in the numerator x squared plus 3x plus 9 divided by x plus 4. So this is our uh, reduced polynomial function. So because the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, we know that there are no horizontal asymptotes. So there are no horizontal asymptotes because the degree of the numerator, right? Um, right, we can just say that it was the case where n was greater than m. The degree of the numerator was greater than the degree of the denominator. Which means that we could potentially have an oblique asymptote. So what is an oblique asymptote? An oblique asymptote is just an asymptote that is a linear asymptote that is not horizontal or vertical. Meaning it has some slope that is not zero or uh, undefined with a vertical slope. So the way that you find oblique asymptotes is you actually just do polynomial long division. And whatever your remainder is for your long division is going to be the equation that your uh, the, the equation of your oblique asymptote. So let's do the long division for this. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 9 being divided by x plus 4. So we ask ourselves, what do I multiply x by to get x squared? Well, that's just x. So x times x is x squared. Uh, x times 4 is positive 4x. And then we subtract these. So we're subtracting the whole thing, which means we have to distribute the negative through. So these are opposites, so they cancel. And then 3x minus 4x, that's going to be negative x. Bring down the 9. So plus 9. Then we ask ourselves, what do I have to multiply x by to get negative x? Well, that's just a negative 1. Distribute negative 1 times x, that's negative x. Negative 1 times 4, that's negative 4. And then again, uh, we subtract the whole thing, which distributes the negative through. So these are opposites, so they cancel. And then 9, and that's going to be plus 4, that's 13. So we don't have a remainder of 0, which means that this is not a factor of this. 
but this remainder is going to be part of this. So this really is going to be plus, this is really going to be plus this remainder over this. So plus 13 over x minus, or x plus four. So this is actually the uh, potentially the equation for our oblique asymptote, but we can actually kind of look at this here and consider what's gonna happen to this value as x gets really large, right? As x is going off to infinity or negative infinity, what's happening to this part of our equation? Well, as the value of x gets very, 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 very large, this denominator is getting really large. And if you take any number and divide by a really, really big number, it's gonna be something small, right? For example, let's say we're taking 13 divided by 1 billion. Well, 13 divided by 1 billion is not gonna be a very large value. It's gonna be very, very, very negligible in terms of how much it affects this value of x minus one. So really, as x goes off to infinity, this is going off to zero. So it's getting closer and closer to zero, which means that this we don't even really care about in terms of our oblique asymptote. So the oblique asymptote is just going to have the equation y equals x minus one. So y equals x minus one. So we have an oblique asymptote with a slope of one and a y-intercept of negative one. And the way that we found that is we just did the long division between our polynomial and in the numerator and denominator.